The Lord Jesus is our shepherd. He lays down his life for his sheep. The Lord Jesus is our shepherd. He knows us and we belong to him. The Lord Jesus is our shepherd. He speaks and we listen for his voice. If we are honest with ourselves, our hearts can often condemn us. But God who knows everything is greater than our hearts. And God's deep desire for us is mercy, love, and peace. Therefore, let us confess our sin together. Lord, have mercy on us. We talk about love, but our actions betray us. We talk about love, but we neglect the poor. We talk about love, but we fail to love one another. Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive us and abide in us by the power of your spirit so that our lives may show our love for Jesus Christ in whose body we live and in whose name we pray, amen. Friends, we seek God's grace with boldness because we trust in Jesus Christ, the one who loves us and laid down his life for us. And this is the good news of the gospel, that in Jesus Christ, we are indeed all forgiven. Thanks be to God. As you gather this morning for worship, each in your own space, in and around Annandale, Virginia, I send you greetings from Abu Dhabi, where my thoughts are with you and where I too worship alongside you. As I do so, I'm reminded of some words from Psalm 139, in which the psalmist states that if I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. As I think of the physical distance between us and the physical distance we experience today in this time of the pandemic, I'm comforted to know that God fills those spaces between us with God's presence. With that in mind, may the peace of the Lord be with you. Lord God, Good Shepherd, by the leading of your Spirit, help us to listen for your voice and follow in your paths all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. Listen to the words from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not 
care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it away from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the beginning, God orders the world with speech. God speaks and the waters are separated from the land. God speaks and the birds of the air fly. God speaks and chaos becomes ordered. In the beginning of the Gospel of John, this speech that gives life is connected from the beginning with Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. This one who is God was, was and is, of course, Jesus. And Jesus, too, has this power to order and to create through his speech. And so often what Jesus creates is something that feels very foreign to the speech and wisdom of the world. In the story from John today, Jesus is explaining that he is the good shepherd. It's not just somebody that's taking care of somebody else's sheep. He owns the sheep and cares for them as if they were his own children. That he would lay down his life for his sheep. And one of the characteristic marks of the sheep is that they will recognize his voice. We as Christians practice, we practice trying to imitate Christ. We practice trying to make our voices sound a little more like Jesus. We practice, we, we try to make our actions in the world reflect a little more of what Jesus' actions were when he lived and what he calls us to, new, to do now, in our speaking, we develop the language of faith. In our testimony, we grow into what we are proclaiming. We seek familiarity with God through worship, through study, through conversation with one another. And it is through this that when God speaks into the world, we are able to recognize God's voice. We recognize that there are a, an unending number of voices competing with God's voice, claiming priority, claiming urgency, which is why we gather together, either virtually or in person, to make sure that our ears are attuned to listen for God, to make sure that we are developing the language of faith such that we, like the sheep of his story, will recognize 
the voice of God, the voice of the one who will comfort them, the voice of the one who cares for them, the voice of the one who sets them in the right direction. Jesus' words don't always seem to cause or to create order out of chaos. Sometimes they confound, they often agitate. They go against our worldly sensibilities. When the world whispers, we do not have enough, there is not enough for us all. Jesus says, God says, I will give you life and you will have it abundantly. When the world says, we see that person suffering, what did she do to get there? Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus does not say, what qualifies you? to enter into my rest. Can I see some identification? Jesus says, are you weary? Let me give you rest. When the world says we need to weigh the cost of helping people, Jesus says, I go after the one who is lost every time. We live in a cut our losses world. It makes sense for, for business, for day-to-day -day life. It, it makes sense for what we feel is uh, survival. But following Jesus and, and learning his words and learning to speak in his ways and learning to be faithful as he calls us to be, learning the patterns of faithful speech means recognizing that the world's sensibilities often are far from the sensibilities of God. We worship, we study, we pray. We think, we challenge, we agitate, we comfort alongside God in the name of Jesus Christ such that we will recognize Christ's voice and Christ's will in the world. He is the Good Shepherd and we indeed are his sheep. Thanks be to God for the home that we have in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Unto them may we always discover faith and love to determine our will. That's our hope and God's will and our calling for our lives and for every new day.
How does God's love abide in anyone who has the goods of the world and sees a sibling in need and yet refuses to help? With love for God and neighbor, we offer our lives to the Lord. We offer the first fruits of our labor. We remember that in the name of the good shepherd, we are called to love one another. I thank you for your continued gifts to John Calvin Presbyterian Church. You can continue to give your tithes and offerings at johncalvinpres.org or through the mail. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you have shown us the meaning of love through Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us. Show us how to share Christ's love by giving our lives for one another to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. May the goodness and mercy of God follow you all the days of your life, and at your life's end, may you dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Alleluia. Amen. For our lives and for our